Greetings, this is Jerry Revere with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. This video details how to implement and verify the functionality of the Communication Manager feature ClockSync over IP, CSOIP. ClockSync over IP was introduced with CM 6.0.1 in that release. This video will show the provisioning steps for CSOIP. I will describe what ClockSync over IP solves, a bit of the technology, show what might happen in a failure condition. I will provision a network of four gateways and I will show a few of the status screens to prove that it is successfully implemented. What is shown here is a general implementation of branch gateways with various digital circuits implemented likely from a variety of service providers and possibly with varying clock sources as well. The problem this creates is poor fax, modem over IP, and video traffic. Each gateway has its own synchronization plan set up and administered independently. ClockSync over IP brings that setup to a central location via the CM system administration terminal. So how does ClockSync over IP work? This graphic shows a digital facility configured in the left gateway. CSOIP uses what is called an inter-gateway connection, IGC stream, with timing sourced from a digital circuit. This stream is sent to slave gateways from this master. The IGC is a 10 millisecond RTP stream generated by the master's VoIP engine and received by the slave's VoIP engine, which synchronizes the slave's TDM buses. This slide shows what happens in the case of a service outage. The BRI circuit in the left graphic has failed. The CSOIP algorithm synchronizes that gateway pair to another master to keep the network synchronized. This is what the network to be configured looks like and what the IGC streams should be doing after the service is provisioned. The two gateways having T1 connections will be the masters and the other two gateways will become slaves off of either one of the masters or possibly one going to each master. The more likely case is the former. I have now logged into CM and have issued the list synchronization media gateway command. As you can see, we have no gateways that have been set up in the synchronization plan. We will now change that. I have entered the command change synchronization media gateway 1. This gateway has two T1s provisioned in it, so I will set slot 1v4 as a primary sync source and slot 1v8 as a secondary and then submit the screen. I have moved on and entered the command change synchronization media gateway 4. This gateway has a single T1 provisioned so I will set the slot 4v2 as a primary sync source and submit the screen. The next two items to be done are to set the two gateway DS1 media modules as synchronization sources. This is done by the command send synchronization followed by the media module number. As you can see, I have done that for both boards, 1v4 and 4v2. Please note that there is not a lot of feedback with respect to the screen output. The screen shows command successfully completed at the bottom, and in the title bar it shows the syntax of the command just entered. The next step in the process is to enable each of the media gateways that are our masters. The command is enable synchronization media gateway 1 and enable synchronization media gateway 4. As you can see, I have completed both commands and they have responded with command completed successfully. All the work we have done so far is in preparation to enabling the CS OIP feature. This should be done as the last step in the process, as if it is done beforehand, the network may reconfigure itself several times with undetermined results. To enable the feature, I'm entering the command 
Change System Parameters Features. There are 19 feature pages and the option is on the 19th page. I have pressed the F8 key to go back to the last page. I have arrowed down to the third line labeled Synchronization over IP. I have changed the value to Y and press F3 to submit the screen. Now CM will start sending the IGC streams out to the slave gateways. They will synchronize their TDM buses to that stream. In some cases, a tandem may build and a downstream gateway will pick up the IGC stream from an upstream slave. We will now look at a few other things to be considered. This screen is a change media gateway screen. After the clock sync feature is enabled, a new field is presented on the screen called used for IP sync. That field defaults to a Y when the feature is turned on. That generally will not need to be touched. If, however, for some reason a decision is made for a particular gateway to not to participate in the clock sync over IP, that field would be changed to an N. What you see now is the IP network region screen. You have the ability to shut off participation of IP clock sync by network region as well. Let's take a look now at the commands that determine if CS OIP is correctly enabled and functioning. The first command I have entered is status IP synchronization system information. The output shows two master domains and four gateways for the member count. This shows that all gateways are accounted for and are timed off of one of the masters. The next status command we will look at is the status IP synchronization source media gateway command. The command is ran against the master clock source gateways. It shows in this screen that gateways 2 and 3 are taking their time off of the gateway 1 as the master. Running the same command on gateway 4, the other master, we get a response shown in the bottom line of the SAT window and that response is no IP synchronization timing provided by this member. As shown in the previous command, all gateways that are slaves were associated with gateway number one. The next status command is the status IP synchronization member media gateway. We will use it to look at our master media gateway number one and then use it to, again to look at media gateway number two as one of the slaves. Shown in the screen is the master media gateway 1. You can see that member 1v0 is timed off the DS1 card in slot 1v4. Looking at the slave gateway number 2, the screen is a bit more interesting. The member row has three items in it. 2v0, the gateway itself, takes its timing off of the master 1v0 as shown in the earlier screens. 1v4 is a T1 clock source for that master. The last things that we will look at are two of the media gateways working in the CS OIP environment. This will be using the CLI of each of the gateways. Show now is Gateway 1, our master, which two of the slaves are sourcing the IGC stream from. I have entered the Show Sync Timing command to look at the synchronization of this gateway. As highlighted, the active source is V4, the DS1 media module. That T1 has synchronized the TDM bus of that gateway and provided the source for setting up the IGC stream. I have switched to gateway number two now and have entered the same show sync timing command. The output is showing that the primary source is following the sourced VoIP IGC stream. The active source is VoIP, but if the IGC stream is lost, that active source would indicate local or V0, indicating that this gateway 
has a free running oscillator. Thank you for your time today. We hope this information was useful. We welcome your comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at avaya mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.